Hi and welcome to this Photoshop tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to create a dream haze effect. So we're starting with quite a clean portrait here and it's fairly crisp, some nice details and we're going to move it into a uh, much more of a dreamlike uh, feel to it. So at the moment the background is uh, is locked so we're just going to click on that lock to, to unlock it and make it a little bit more flexible later on. And the lighting in this image is coming from the top right so it's going to work better with the images that have um, got a, a light source from the side. Um, we're going to add some more lighting effects. We're going to go to Filter, Render, and Lighting Effects using the Infinite setting. And you can you can play around with the other settings, but we're going to keep it simple uh, for this stage of the tutorial. And just grabbing the handle there, just repositioning. And you can see here that the lighting is still coming from the top right. So really we're just uh, increasing the intensity of that lighting effect. Then clicking OK. We're then going to duplicate that layer. And we're going to add a blur effect. So we go to Filter blur and we go to Gaussian blur. So Gaussian blur is quite a strong effect so you can you can adjust it to suit but we're aiming to really remove most of the details and just maintain just the uh, kind of a very light awareness of the form there. So we're going to click OK and change the blend mode to soft light. So you can see already that's created a softening effect. Then we're going to duplicate that layer once again but this time we're going to change the blend mode to screen. So we end up with a few different layer, layers of um, softening effects. I'm actually going to drop the opacity of that top one down a little bit so it's not quite as strong. Okay, so that's a, some nice softening of the image. And then we're going to add a lens flare, so filter, render, and uh, lens flare. So a few different choices. Um, we're going to go for using a 50 to 300 millimeter. Then you can play around with the brightness, um, you know, to see what kind of effects you can achieve with what you're producing. Uh, so I'm going to hit OK. So you can play around with this, you kind of get stronger or uh, lighter effects. So it's quite light in, in this particular image, uh, but you can play around with it for yourselves. So we're going to make a, a new blank layer. And on this blank layer, we're going to add a series of white spots. So using the brush, uh, using uh, making sure the hardness is all the way down as well. I'm going to add a series of white spots, not black. So just check that your foreground spots is on white. Uh, using the square brackets on the keyboard, you're able to quite quickly change the size of your your brush and we're aiming to really get a good spread of uh, dots so all different shape, uh, all different sizes uh, so some small some large uh, so you can add as many as you feel feel suits so you can experiment with that one and once you've got the spots on there we're going to go to filter and we're going to go to blur once again and we're going to use a radial blur so the spin is going to be about between 50 and 20 uh, make sure you put it on best quality and that's going to add quite a nice little touch in the background there. Then we're going to add another blank layer. And this blank layer we're going to use a, the gradient tool. So if you make sure you've got the black to white gradient set. And then clicking on it, double clicking on the swatch at the top. And we're going to click on the bottom left uh, black swatch here. And I'm going to need to change uh, to a colour of your choice. Oops. So in this case I'm going to go for blue. There we go. And very simply click, drag and drop. And I'm keeping the white coming from the uh, the side that the light source is. So you play around with that until you get the desired effect. There we go. And we're going to go to change the blend mode again. So you can experiment with these. Uh, but in my case, we're going to go for screen. You're going to drop the opacity a little bit as well so the effect isn't quite as strong. Um, so there we go. If we have a look at the before and after. So we start with quite a clean, crisp uh, image. And uh, we've added some nice kind of softening effects and some... Uh, some spiral effects in the background there and some colors as well. Uh, the only thing you could do to really finish off would be to add some level adjustments and with those levels you could just kind of add those finishing touches. Okay, hope you enjoyed and have fun with your own edits. Thank you.